Our pictures are gonna be real messed up. Yeah, it's bokeh time, baby. Bokeh. Today, as I told you, we're gonna talk about bokeh. And since we don't know much about that either, we're gonna be going through the basics. Yeah. Now bokeh, according to Wikipedia, which is always a trustful source, mm -hmm. is the aesthetic quality of the out-of-focus out parts of a photo that are produced by a lens. Most people, when they see a photo, that I really like there's something dreamy, yeah. you know, there's something, ah, oh, it's so lush and pretty creamy. There's all these words, but most people don't actually know that what they're seeing is a mistake that became a trademark of photography. Mm -hmm. And since we don't know all the technical details about the bokeh and how the lenses work, we're gonna call an expert. Yeah. And we'll let our friend Michael tell us how all this works. Yeah, Michael's the man. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know anyone who really knows more about lenses than this guy. So yeah. let's give him a let's call. Let's give him a call. So now we have Michael on the line. He's a friend of ours and he knows the bokeh the best. <laughs> Thanks for your for your compliments. But I think a lot of people in the world are, uh, have more knowledge about lenses than I do. Well, it could be. Well, <laughs> I don't know them. So <laughs> so maybe the first things we were, we want to talk about is from a technical perspective, what actually is bokeh? Um, uh, actually, bokeh is a Japanese word describing how unsharp the background is um, in, in photography. And unsharp background um, happens when you open up the aperture because you, you do not only use um, light rays which are quite close to the optical axis, but also far away from the optical axis, so from the borders. And as those light rays are not hitting uh, at the same place as stuff which is further away from the object yeah. is not hitting on the focal plane where you focus on, it appears unsharp on, on the image itself. So actually there are different types of bokehs, which I can show you here. So at the left hand side, you see ring shaped bokeh, uh, which is actually in some old lenses, very yeah. obvious. And a lot of people love this kind of bokeh because you get a special special touch um, in the image. However, when, when you talk with, with R&D people or developers, they, they um, um, see that like a mistake in the, yeah. in the, in the lens design because um, this is um, caused by optical uh, faults. Um, and then in the middle, you see the so-called solid bokeh, uh, which has a sharp edge, as you can see. So the transition between the unsharp point and the dark point um, is sharp so yeah. um, and then um, Olympus call it feathered uh, bokeh uh, which is a bokeh which has a smooth um, transition so it's it's not a sharp transition but it's a smooth transition between this unsharp light point um, uh, and and the rest of the background and the R&D uh, people are always looking for a very homogeneous um, background yeah. um, that it is not disturbing but you can still recognize what kind of stuff is in the background. Uh, here you can see clearly that left-hand side, you have no clue what it is. Uh, on, on the right-hand side, you see uh, there are flowers in the background, even though that they are unsharp, uh, but you can at least have a clue that there is something in the background yeah, exactly. uh, which has a certain shape, right? Yeah. That's a lot of info. That's a lot of info. Really good info. Um, yeah, maybe if you could, like, very quickly, do you have some tips for us before we head out? And we'll see if we can incorporate. So, how do we achieve the best bokeh or most bokehlicious photos? So, for <laughs> maximum. So, first of all, open up your aperture, <laughs> of course. Uh, use longer lenses, because uh, um, depth of field is depending on focal length. And get as close as possible because also the distance influences the depth of field. So the closer you are, the less depth of field you have. So then then it should work or well, it is working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that, that sounds good. Hey, we're going to head out. Now we have my head is brimming with uh, with the science of it. And I lo love that. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer our uh, very average questions. Yeah, yeah uh, you're welcome. Um, I hope it helped and um, enjoy shooting. Thank we you. will. All right, hey, thank you so much. We'll catch you later. Now, that was the tech part. And as much as I love technology and going deep into the details of lenses and all that, let's talk more about 
how we can actually use bokeh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna head into the park and we're gonna show you some ways of making bokeh your best friend. So first tip is to find a background that produces nice bokeh. Try to find backgrounds with enough detail that have highlights. And by highlights, I mean the brighter areas of the image. Now, if you, if you see this first photo that I took of me, I took it against a kind of whitish wall, and there's some dark and some white, but the elements are so big that you don't really see those kind of blurred dots here and there. Yeah. What I started looking is like, where do I have some bright, small spots that will render nice out of bokeh elements? So it's like a tree. Like a tree. For example, I found a tree. All I did is I moved two meters, and two this, meters. This is the same lens, same aperture. Same everything. But and the picture see, completely changed. Yeah, you can see much more bokeh in the picture. Yeah. And tip number two would be the aperture. So you want to open up the aperture of your camera to its widest possible setting you have on your lens. Yeah. So now that we have our max aperture, we started with a 12 millimeter lens, which is a pretty wide angle mm -hmm. for portrait shots. But we're gonna start with the wide end and show you how things change when we go a bit tighter. Yeah. So tip number three would be introduce some distance between your subject and the background. With the simple thing of moving both the camera and the subject, we drastically change the photo that you see right here. Yeah. So even though we're in a 12 millimeter, just because we moved further away, we're actually getting some pretty nice bokeh in there. The 2.0, it's surprisingly nice and, mm -hmm. yeah. nice and creamy. Now, going with the same tip, you can also change by going closer to the subject. Of course, that will change uh, the size of your photo, but if you really want that bokeh on a semi-wide angle le lens, you are going to be ne needing to go pretty mm -hmm. close to make it work. So, pick up the longest lens that you have in your bag and try again with your bokeh this time. Yeah. We're gonna go straight into a 25 millimeter lens. And this photo is already a lot better. Mm -hmm. It's way more bokeh because it's compressing the background. Yeah. Jumping into a 45 millimeter like you see right here, now that's already a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you're still not satisfied with your bokeh and you want that dreamy look that everybody is talking about, you want to go even more longer lengths. So we shot the next photo with the 300 yeah, millimeter this lens. Bad boy right here. Yeah. Now you're able to get this super blurry image that is kind of like a cowboy shot, shot size from the thighs mm. all the way up. That's super blurry for that kind of a shot. Yeah. And then if you go to a close up, and that's all just a yeah. hot, pretty mess. Yeah, the background is a, it's it's like melted. Yeah, it's like melting butter. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's bokeh. To wrap this up, this is the recipe we use for bokehlicious pictures. Step number one, open up your aperture fast as possible. Step number two, a background that has a lot of details and highlights. For example, a tree. Step number three, get away from it. And step number four, you can take a bit more longer lens to get even more bokeh out of your pictures. Yeah. You'll learn this really quickly. If you want a great tip, just put your camera in manual focus, go to its closest focus, and walk around like that. Mm -hmm. You'll quickly realize where's the good bokeh stuff and find those really creamy setups to take your portraits or other photos. Yeah. Great tip and great way to learn. Yeah. Have fun with all this, and I think we'll see you next time. Yeah. Bye bye.